In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to scan and generate QR codes within your Flutter application. Our application is going to have the following functionality. The user is going to be able to use the camera on the device and then be able to actually scan a QR code. And when a successful scan has been performed, we'll show them the actual picture of the QR code as well as the actual value that that QR code had. Furthermore, the user is going to be able to go on to another page where they can type something into the text field for example, the URL to a website, and then using this information is going to generate a QR code that you can use and share with other people. So to get started, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is actually showing you guys the actual dependencies that I'm going to be using within R project. The first is going to be mobile underscore scanner package and this package is basically going to allow us to implement the functionality of being able to use the device's camera to scan barcodes as well as QR codes. So I'm going to copy this dependency and then I'm going to come to the pubspec.yaml file and under dependencies I'm going to be pasting this. Besides this, we're also going to be using the pretty QR code package, which is going to allow us to take some string or some other data and then transform that into an actual QR code. So copy this dependency as well, come back to dependencies section and then paste this here and then do command save and let Flutterpub get to do its magic. As a side note, links to all of the resources as well as a link to the source code can be found in the description below. So feel free to take a look at it if you're confused at any point. Once this is done, the next thing that we have to do is basically perform some operations that are going to allow us to successfully use these packages and build our application. The first thing that we're going to be doing is making sure that we start running our application if you're running. And then from here, for the Android side of the thing, all you have to do is go to Android, App, Build.Gradle, and then you have to change the actual minimum SDK version under default config to be 21 or higher. Once this is done, that's all you have to do on the Android side of things. For those of you who are using iOS, what you have to do is come to iOS Runner, and then from here, open the info.plist file. And then what you can do is come to the mobile scanner package page and here you can scroll down until you see the iOS section and then you can copy these key string pairs here and then come back to the info.plist file and add them to the dictionary as so. So just copy and paste them in and if you're going to be deploying this app to production then make sure that you update these string values as well. So once this is done, this is basically going to let iOS know that, hey, our application requires some specific permissions. And what's the reason for why we need access to these specific permissions? In this case, it's the access to the photo library and camera usage. Once this is done, that's pretty much all we have to do in terms of the setup. So the next thing that I'm going to be mentioning is that if you're going to be testing the functionality that we're going to be coding within this tutorial, then it's only going to be possible to test it on Android as iOS simulators do not have a camera that you can test on the simulator. Otherwise, if you want to test it on an actual physical Android or iOS device, that's going to work for you and the code is going to remain the same. So what I'm going to be doing is actually using an Android simulator for the demonstration purposes, but I highly recommend that for this tutorial, you actually plug in a physical Android or iOS device. So now that we have a good understanding of the actual dependencies that our project depends on, I'm quickly going to share with you guys the actual structure of our starting project. So the starting project is pretty simple. All I have is a page folder under which I have two pages. Both of them are stateful widgets and they contain a scaffold which just has an app bar underneath of which I've added a button that allows me to go from the scan QR code page to the generate QR code page and then from the generate back to the scan. That's all there is. There's no actual logic implemented within our application for generating a QR code or scanning one. So let's get into it. So the first thing that we're going to be doing in this tutorial is actually learning how to scan a QR code. So for that I'll come to my scan code page and then here what I'm basically going to be doing is coming to the stateful widgets corresponding state class and all of the functionality is going to be added here. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be setting the body parameter for our scaffold to be a mobile scanner widget and this is an actual widget that is going to come to us from the mobile scanner package and then it's going to expect us to provide it with a function callback which is going to be run every time a actual a QR code is detected or a barcode is read. So on detect, what we're going to do is that we're going to get a capture object and then we'll use that to perform some operations. But for now, let's just do this. With this then, you're going to see that the application is going to ask us for some permissions, which we are going to say that we are going to allow it. If you do not, then it's not going to work as intended. So now we're actually seeing the device's camera output being displayed to us. And what we can now do is implement the logic for actually detecting QR codes. But before I do this, if you're going to be using a simulator, 
So here's the basic premise of how you can manipulate the camera feed that you're seeing within the Android simulator. So you can hold Alt on the keyboard, and once this is done, you can use the WASDs as well as QNE to move up and down, forward, backward, left and right within the camera view. And when you're going to basically start the initial feed, you're going to see that you're going to be in a position somewhat similar to this. So to move, you'll hold Alt and then you'll move your camera and then you'll have the ability to scan this QR code. To add the QR code, if you're using a simulator, what you can do is click on the three dot buttons here, come to the section which says camera, and then here for the virtual scene images, you can add a QR code to the wall as well as a table by just selecting a file and adding it here. And once you do that, within the camera feed, you're going to start seeing a QR code being displayed on the wall, and then similarly on the table as well. And then to look at these and actually scan them, we'll implement that functionality. But for now, you should be able to see this QR code being displayed. So now that this is done, the next thing that we have to do for the mobile scanner to work is actually give it a controller, which is going to be of type mobile scanner controller. And for this controller, we have to define some parameters. The first is going to be detection speed. The detection speed is going to be set to detection speed dot no duplicates. And what this is basically going to allow us to do for every unique QR code that we scan only fire on detect once. You can also do detection speed dot normal, but this is going to repeatedly fire for the same QR code on detect. So if you have some logic which is going to determine within on detect if this QR code has already been seen or not, then you can proceed with this. But I'll recommend using no duplicates. And this way, if you are scanning a duplicate QR code again and again, it's not going to keep calling on detect. Do command save and that's pretty much it. And then what I'm going to be doing is that within on detect, I'm going to do print capture and it's just going to give us an output on our actual debug console saying that we get an instance of something. So to actually test this, what I'll do is I'll stop running my application. Hot reload for some reason on a virtual Android device doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is stop running the application, click run and start debugging again. And hopefully this time when our application starts up and it scans that QR code, you're going to see that we are going to basically get an output on our debug console, letting us know that we got an instance of a barcode capture. And here you can see within our debug log, we say that there's an instance of barcode capture. So we're getting something, let's see what we can do with it. Well, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be showing you guys how you can access the value of the QR code. So for that, what I'll do is that I'll create a final list. And this list is going to be of barcodes. And then I'm going to say that this list is going to be called barcodes. And I'm going to be setting this equal to capture dot barcodes like so. Once this is done, to actually access the image of the actual QR code that's detected by the mobile scanner, what you can do is you can go to your mobile scanner controller and set the return image property here to be true. This way, what's going to happen is that when we get the capture object, it's going to have an image attribute which we can use to access this image. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that I'm going to create a uint list, optional, it's going to be called image, and I'm going to set this equal to capture dot image like so. Once this is done, the next thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be creating a for loop. And in this for loop, I'm going to go over all of the barcodes. So for barcode in barcodes like so. And for each barcode, all I'm going to do is actually print to the console. And let me do print the following string, which I'll copy and paste in, which says barcode found and then the barcode value. And here I'm going to say final so to define the actual barcode and do this. So let's do command save. Let's not change anything else. Let's start running our application. This is one of the annoying parts for using the mobile scanner package. And I'm going to start the video once the application starts running again. So as you can see in our debug console, now that the barcode was actually scanned successfully or the QR code, it says that it found a barcode and the value for that was qr-r.xyz. So it's pretty much working as intended. So now what I want to do is that every time successful capture happens, I want to show a dialog in which it's going to show us the picture of the actual QR code that it basically extracted the information from, as well as the actual value that that actual QR code has. So for this, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add an if clause here, I'm going to say if the image is not equals to null, so we get an image, then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be calling show dialog. And the show dialog function basically expects to get past the context as well as a builder that defines how the dialog is going to be built. This is a function callback. 
So we do this and within this function, what I'm going to do is return an alert dialog. Then for this alert dialog, all I'm going to do is I'm going to set the title to be a text property. And here I'm going to do barcodes. And then from the barcodes, I'm going to access the first value or the first element in the barcodes list. And I'm going to get the raw value from it and do command save. And then the final thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm also going to set the content property for the alert dialog to be an image. And the image property here is going to be memory image. And then I'm going to pass it the image like so. Since our image is a uint8 list, then to actually render it, we're going to be using the memory image object uh, and then passing that to our image widget. So do command save, start running our application, start rerunning it, and hopefully this time it should work as intended. So welcome back everybody. So as soon as the application started, you can see that it scanned that QR code. And once the QR code was scanned, it showed us said alert dialog, where we can see the actual image of the QR code that was scanned, as well as the actual value that that QR code has. So with this done, what we can do is proceed to the next step, which is actually the ability to generate QR codes within our Flutter application. So to do that, I'm going to come to the generate QR code page. And here, what I'm going to do is open the generate code page file. And then we're going to be adding all of the logic for actually generating a QR code here. So as I had alluded to before, to generate a QR code, we're going to be using the package pretty QR code, and it doesn't require any kind of setup from our site. So all I'm going to be doing is actually showing you guys how you can generate a QR code. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is coming to the build section here, and I am going to change the body property here to not be this anymore and instead of this be a padding widget then for this padding widget i'm going to add some padding and it's going to be edge sets dot all um, and then 10 pixels from all sides and once this is done for the child of this i'm going to add a column the reason i'm adding a column is because we're going to have a text field and then underneath of that we're going to actually have a widget that's going to render our qr code once there is something within that text field i'm also going to define the three properties for my column which are the alignment properties as well as the size. And then once this is done, I'm going to set the children's property to be an empty list for now. Once this is done, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is that within this children's list, I'm going to create a text field. And then this text field is going to be basically shown to us, as you can see. And when we click on it, a keyboard is going to pop. And then what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be setting the on submitted callback function on this text field like the following, and we're going to get a value passed to us for this function callback, and we're going to use this value and save it somewhere. So where am I going to be saving this value? Well, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to come to the top of my generate code page state class, and here I'm going to create a variable, string optional, QR data, and then when the actual value within the text field gets submitted, then I'm going to call set state, and within this, I'm going to set the QR data to be equal to the value like so and do command save. So now when we click on the actual text field and we add something to it like so, then once I press this tick button here or done on iOS, it's going to take this information or this value and it's going to save that within our QR data variable. So now that this is done, the next thing that I want to do is basically take this information, which is a string, and then render that in the form of an actual QR code. So to do that, what I'll do is that within my children's list, after my text field, I'm going to say if our QR data is not equals to null, then we're going to show a very specific widget that we get from the pretty QR code package, and it's called pretty QR view if I'm not mistaken. And here we have to provide it with an image. But we can actually use a constructor method on it called data. And using this, we can just give it raw data. And it's going to use that data and generate the QR code for us. And the data in this case is going to be QR data. And I could add an exclamation mark here because I know that this is not going to be rendered if QR data is null. And then with this done, if I do command save, you're going to see that now the QR code is being shown to us. So now if I go ahead and I change this information to some other website, let's just say like this and press enter, you're going to say that the QR code changes and this QR code is actually going to function as intended and it's going to be able to be scanned using other devices. So that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. If you want to learn more about how you can use the 
mobile scanner or the pretty QR code to actually either scan QR codes or generate QR codes, then I highly recommend taking a look at the actual documentation for these packages. There's a lot of cool things that, for example, the pretty QR code package can do, such as actually embed a custom image within your QR code, as you can see here. That's pretty easy to do. So with that said, I hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video as well as subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.